Whatever your site, your taste, your ideas, or your budget, there's a Lockwood as unique as you are. Lockwood, New Zealand's home for good. I'd like now to introduce Mark, Mark Christensen, and his wife Maxie. She would come forward and tell your story, Mark. Thank you for coming. Uh, thanks, Bryce. Um, it's always a pleasure uh, to come and talk about a great New Zealand product. And um, I think after the presentation tonight, uh, you'll understand why we're so positive about this product. Uh, so th this is our um, property in Christchurch. It's on the north side of the Port Hills. Um, it's a governor design, uh, modified with a basement underneath, but on a uh, concrete slab foundation, uh, block work, co reinforced concrete block work in the, in the foundation. But apart from that, um, pretty standard uh, governor design with a few modifications. Um, before I talk about the damage to uh, our property and, and the surrounding properties, I thought I'd just give you a bit of context on the um, Christchurch earthquakes. Uh, there's some information off um, Canterbury Quake Live, so you're free to study it at your will. <laughs> but the um, these series of um, graphs up here, the first three here, show the earthquake pattern in uh, Canterbury within 25 kilometres of the cathedral up until the 4th of September. So that's what used to go on in the background all the time. And this is what's been going on in our lives since then. So each one of those lines is an earthquake event. Uh, this is a picture of our subdivision, our uh, properties, this one just here. Behind us we have the Port Hills here. This is quite a steep escarpment up here. But in, in this neighbourhood here, there's about the subdivision's about five or six years old. Uh, there'd be about 30 houses built in the subdivision. Uh, we had a meeting with our uh, neighbours in about um, June, I think it was. And there were only two houses in the subdivision that, that weren't um, really damaged at all. Our one and, and a lightweight timber framed house. Uh, for the February and June earthquakes, uh, we were within one kilometre of the epicentres of both those big earthquakes. In February, um, the ground accelerations uh, were the highest recorded in history in the world up until uh, the Japanese disaster in northern Japan. So. Um, vertical acceleration was 1.8 G, so you got the force of gravity coming down. In February 22nd, the house was lifted. The force lifting the house was twice the force of gravity. So uh, phenomenal forces. Um, that equates to about seven or eight times the old building code design standard. And the uh, horizontal uh, acceleration uh, equates to about two to three times the old building code design standard. So this house has withstood many times what the old building code standard was. Um, 10,000 earthquakes up to a few weeks ago. Uh, so we're pretty used to them now. But you can see here the main epicenters. So this was the Darfield earthquake out here. This was the one on 4th of September. And then we've got, um, uh, I can't remember what that one is, it's May or June. Uh, then we've got February and June in here, and then December 23rd out here. Our house sits right in the middle of all those dots there. So it's taken a, a fair hammering. Um, just to give you a, a bit of an idea on the power and some of these earthquakes, that purple line on that graph is the combined energy released from the Nagasaki and Hiroshima nuclear weapons. So that line there. And the four major quakes are the, uh, the four big events. Uh, a little bit of... <laughs> Sorry, the, it just all floods back a bit sometimes. So. 
Uh, a little bit about the damage in our neighbourhoods. Um, as I said, uh, the neighbourhood's about five or six years old. And um, these are some of our neighbours' property. So uh, this property here was a um, lightweight timber frame uh, with brick cladding and then plaster on top. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty well built home. Um, this isn't occupied at the moment and won't be occupied because of, of rockfall hazard, but it's probably a demolition case anyway. So there's significant cracking um, in, in all areas of, of this house. Uh, these properties here, this was a um, uh, one of the main properties in the, at the top of the valley. So uh, you'll see in the garage here, there's a really big rock um, that's come uh, come down from the escarpment above and bounce right through the roof of this house. Um, significant damage to the outside of the house. I'm not saying a lot would withstand that. I'm not, not sure that, that would, but uh, ours hasn't been tested by that. We're outside the Rockfall Hazard area, but the, um, the, the house itself, just from the shaking damage, has, has suffered significant damage as well. A lot of the properties in the um, subdivision were brick clad homes and a number of them had tile roofs. Uh, a lot of the brick uh, cladding just peeled off the houses so just the shaking energy and the acceleration has just peeled a lot of that cladding off the houses. So uh, whilst families are, li are still living in some of these homes uh, and emergency repairs have been done to them, uh, you know, there's still significant work to do. And on the inside, uh, a lot of the jib walls are, are just total replacements. Um, on the tile roof houses, and you'll see it on a couple of slides coming, um, because of the vertical acceleration, it just lifted all the tiles off the roof and then they came back down and they don't come down in the same order they went up. So, <laughs> uh, so down in Heathcote Valley, which is just at the bottom of where we are, and, and what I'm talking about here is, is really... Um, our area suffered from uh, shaking damage. Uh, we're not in the areas that you see on TV with uh, uh, liquefaction and settlement, so that, those are totally different issues. Um, um, and, and this area, compared to the, those other areas, is, is, is in good condition. So, you know, there's some people in Christchurch who are really suffering in their, in their homes. Uh, you can see on this one here how the tile, the ridge, has just come off the top of the roof. Uh, this was a, a brand new house uh, which was um, built just before June, I think, and you know they just moved into that, and you know <laughs> they're going to have to rebuild a lot of the exterior of that property. Built to withstand earthquakes, cyclones, and a fair few five-day tests. Lockwood, New Zealand's home for good. Uh, so uh, the damage to our, our Lockwood was really minor. Um, and the house has always been livable, so you know we never had any um, problems staying in the house. Uh, we had minor cosmetic damage to... We had a jib feature wall in the home, and that was cracked in September, uh, and I repeared it. Um, and then in February I said, that's enough. <laughs> We're going to get rid of the jib out of the house and we put Lockwood Timbers in to replace that. We have one broken sewer pipe out of the ensuite and a broken vanity top from the shaking damage in February and that was just easily replaced. In Canterbury they, uh, they used to um, fill under the foundation, so the foundation sub-base, they'd fill it with what they uh, call in Canterbury rounds, which is just little round stones without binding metal. So for those in the construction industry, normally you'd use um, uh, AP20 or AP40 base course and then pour your slab on top of that and compact it. Uh, that wasn't the practice in Canterbury. And what happened when this stuff gets shaped really bad, it compacts. And so we ended up with a void under our reinforced concrete floor and you, you could walk across the floor and you could hear a drum. Uh, so we had to bring in a special company to inject resin under the floor to strengthen the floor. Uh, and they lifted the floor by about 12 mils, but that, that was really the um, worst damage and, and that really had nothing to do with the Lockwood home. That was uh, um, what's now considered poor construction techniques. The houses were stood over 10,000 earthquakes. 
Um, and we were very close to the epicentre of, of two of the biggest shops and the ones with the most energy. Um, a lot of the modern properties in, in our neighbourhood have suffered significant damage um, and you know a lot of those were well built uh, homes. Um, windows and doors, we've had no windows and doors jam in the house throughout, throughout the event. Um, which surprised even me. I thought I thought we might have a few issues with that, but uh, we haven't had anything there. So, Mark and Maxie, on behalf of everyone here, thank you for coming and talking to us. We really appreciate it. We wish you well, safe journey home, and may those horrible quakes stop and you guys get on with your lives down there and get back to normal as soon as possible.